fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. It would take a whole shelf full of spices and special flavorings if your mom started out to make a honey spice on her own, and lots of extra work, too. But with Betty Crocker's wonderful honey spice cake mix, everything she needs is right there in the package, all blended and ready to go. All she has to do is add water and two fresh eggs. Mmm, and what a cake. Why, a great big Betty Crocker honey spice cake disappears in nothing flat around our house. You just can't stop eating it. And I know once your family finds out how good Betty Crocker Honey Spice Cake is, they'll make quick work of everyone your mom turns out. But she won't mind. They're quick work for her, too. So easy to bake. And they always turn out perfect. Betty Crocker promises that. So have mom put Betty Crocker Honey Spice Cake on her grocery list today, huh? You'll be glad she did. And so will your whole family. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'll sell the holly! In his camp in the wild horse country of Texas, north of the Brazos River, the Lone Ranger sat on the ground with his back against a tree. Silver stood nearby. Using his teeth, the big white stallion pulled at a knot in a rope that bound the masked man's ankles. That's it, Silver. You've loosened it. Now pull, fellow. The Lone Ranger had tied the rope himself to give Silver practice in one of the many things he'd been taught. Now you're getting it, big fellow. That's it. Good for you. That's all we'll have time for. Tonto's returning from town. The masked man rose to his feet and patted Silver. Hey, as Tonto drew rein and dismounted in the woodland clearing. Who's got home, fellow? He's just got easy, fellow. Did you get all the supplies we need, Tonto? Ah. Me get them all. And keep us hobby. Me see regiment of cavalry in town. In Rushville? Ah. Uh, them camp on grass in front of courthouse. Did you ask the storekeeper about the wild horse hunters we're trying to find? Ah. Uh, me ask him. Him not know of anyone who sell hide. The four men we've followed from the Oklahoma border have killed a lot of mustangs. They must have hides to sell. Well, me only speak to storekeeper. Maybe someone else know of men who sell hides. That's possible. Otto, I'm going to make a thorough inquiry. In Rushville? Yes. You wear masks? No, I wear that old suit of buckskins you have in your saddlebag and disguise my face. As a further precaution, I'll leave Silver here and ride Scout. In town, the disguised Lone Ranger saw a group of soldiers and Indians standing in front of one of the tents on the courthouse lawn. The soldiers ordered him to halt and dismount. Halt and dismount. Who's got who? Then Captain Bates said, Please face the Indians. I want Chief Quanah to look at you. Very well. Chief, was this man in the group of horse hunters who shot the Indian boy? <laughs> no, him not one of them. Very well. You're free to go. Well, Captain, I'd like to speak to you privately. Let's go to my tent. Well? Here is a military pass to identify me. What? Why, this is issued to the Lone Ranger. Yes. 
You've always been described to me as wearing a mask and riding a white stallion called Silver. I left Silver in camp, and I'm wearing a disguise in the hope of getting information about wild horse hunters who are operating in this area. Horse hunters? Yes. Well, that's what I'm looking for. That's what I thought when you questioned me. Why are you looking for them? I'd like to convince them that it's cruel and unnecessary to kill horses for their hides when they can be broken and put to useful work. If those men are found, they'll kill no more horses. Oh? They raided a Mustang herd on the Comanche reservation. And in doing so, they shot and wounded a Comanche boy. So that's why you wanted the Indians to look at me? Yes. And those men must be found and punished. Otherwise, Chief Quan and his people may go on the warpath. That would be a disaster for the whole Southwest. Right. Is the chief sure the horse hunters shot the boy? The men with him witnessed the shooting. When did it take place? Yesterday. Oh. The boy was trying to capture a Mustang to break and ride. The hide hunters didn't want him to scare the herd which was inside the reservation, so they deliberately shot him. Do you have any information about the horse killers? Yes. They've been identified by detailed descriptions the Indians gave us. Hack Morris what? is the leader. Oh. Three members of the Yarrow clan are with him. They're Rube and Nick Yarrow, who are brothers, and a cousin named Polk Yarrow. I've heard of Hack Morris. He was a close friend of a killer Todd and I helped capture. And I'll be grateful for any help you give us. But time is short. I'll try to keep the chief in town for a day or so. I'll report to you as soon as possible, Captain Bates. Meanwhile, Hack Morris and the Yarrow brothers rode in search of several of the wild mustangs from the Indian reservation. Most of the horses were penned in a blind canyon where Polk Yarrow had been left on guard. But the greedy killers hoped to find the remainder before starting the slaughter. They rode slowly through a woods until Hack suddenly signaled a halt. Hold there, hold, hold there. Boys, I smell wood smoke. That means there's a campfire somewhere ahead. Yeah, it might be soldiers or engines, both of which we got to stay away from. Yeah, Mickey. Think we better turn back? No, steady. Easy there. <laughs> you stay here with the horses, Rube. Yeah. Nick and I'll go ahead and on foot and look around. Moving cautiously, Hack and Nick crept toward the camp and presently saw the clearing where Tonto was grooming the great horse Silver. The eyes of the killers widened when they saw the magnificent stallion tied to a tree by a rope around his neck. What a horse. A purebred Arabian, or I miss my guess. Let's get him. Now yeah, we'll have to get that engine first. Right. Come on. Place your hands. Huh? Who are you? You're covered. Don't make a move. Well, he got hands up. What you want? That horse. You horse hunters. Me get you. Get his arm. Get Use your get gun, Hack. Right. <laughs> Yeah, that got him. Yeah, why'd you just hit him with your gun? Why didn't you shoot him? Plenty of time for that if we decide to kill him. Huh? <laughs> hey, look at that horse. He weren't tired. I bet he'd be attacking us. Yeah, there's a horse with fire. We can sell that critter for a fancy price. Yeah. Take that rope land there and tie the engine while he's unconscious. I look through these saddle bags and blanket rolls. Maybe there'll be something of value besides the horse. Right. Hey, Yarrow! Yeah? Come here and bring the horses. While Tonto lay on the ground, unconscious and tightly bound, the three horse killers examined the contents of the saddlebags the Lone Ranger had left behind. They found silver horseshoes and a supply of silver bullets. Then Hack exclaimed, Yeah, that settles it. These saddlebags belong to the Lone Ranger. And that's his famous horse called Silver. Well, we got to have that horse. What about that engine? He must be Toto, the Lone Ranger's partner. Shall we drill him? No, I've got a better idea. We'll take him with us. For what? He might come in handy in case we have to make a deal. I reckon the Lone Ranger would meet almost any terms to save the life of Toto. Well, let's get that horse. He looks like he'll fight. We'll put three ropes on him. As the three horse killers mounted their horses and shook their lariats into loops, Silver sensed their intentions and whirled in his tracks, looking for a way of escape. <laughs> but he was tethered to a tree. Go, Hack! They're closest! There, here it goes! I got a loop on him! <laughs> Feeling the rope on his neck, Silver reared and trumpeted in fury. Hold it! Uh, I've got rope, on 
him so high. <laughs> Held by three tight lariats tied to the saddles of three strong horses that knew their work and braced their legs, Silver fought vainly to free himself. He bucked, reared on his hind legs, and threshed the air with his forefeet while he screamed with fury. Keep your ropes tight. I'll cut him loose from the tree. Never mind the redskin. Leave him there. Uh, let's move the horse. Get up there. Get up Get up Get up Get up Get him. Look at him fighting the rope. Uh, if need be, our horses will drag him. Now all pull together. Get up Get up Get up We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Boxer Ben fights hard and fair, so in the ring you kids beware. He's dynamite because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. (laughs) He's feeling his Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. Cheerios, the cereal everybody loves. No other cereal looks like Cheerios. It's shaped like little letter O's. No other cereal tastes like Cheerios. It's the only ready-to-eat cereal with this fresh toasted oat flavor. No other cereal is like Cheerios. You see, Cheerios is made from oats. And every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. Have Cheerios every morning. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. to continue. With three ropes pulling on his neck, Silver was forced to accompany his captors. But he fought every inch of the way, tearing up the sod and leaving a telltale trail. The three riders and their mounts were almost exhausted when they reached the box canyon with Silver. Hack yelled, Hey, folks! Let down the bar so we can get this critter in! After much difficulty, the four men drove Silver into the box canyon, which was surrounded by high walls, except for the narrow opening that was closed by the high split rail fence. The horse killers cut their ropes, rather than risk their lives by going near enough to the infuriated stallion to loosen the loops. Then Rube said, We left a trail a blind man can follow. Yeah, that means the lone ranger will be here. We'll get back down the trail a little way and ambush that masked man and his pal. I've been hoping for a long time to get them. You have? Yeah. They're the ones who cut a pal of mine a while back. He was hanged for murder. Name was Clem Ashley. (laughs) Silver, who had been standing at the edge of the wild horse herd, trembling with rage, became quiet when his captors rode away. He took off the loosened loops of the lariats around his neck then walked to the fence and inspected it from one end to the other. He paused at the middle section where Polk had let down the bars. The fence was too high to jump, and Silver knew it. Oh, scout. Oh, easy. Set it up. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger, returning from Rushville on scout, found Tonto conscious but tightly bound, and he saw that Silver was gone and the camp ransacked. As he released his friend, he said, Are oh, you hurt, Tuttle? I'll um, be getting bumped on head. But me all right now. Who came here? Uh, two men come. Get drop on me. Tracks show that three men were here and three horses. Maybe other man, horse, come. After me, knocked out. They've taken silver. Oh, me no. Can you stand? Uh, here, let me help you. Uh, you want to stay here while I go after the men who took silver? Uh, me go with you, Kimasabi. Scout carry double. All right. The other ground is torn up, Toto. Silver must have put up a furious battle. Oh, me hope him not hurt. The thieves took the saddlebags. I wonder if they found my clothes and mask. You hide them in brushwood. I'll see if they're still there. You find them? Yes, Toto. I'll change into my own clothes before we go after those crooks. Oh, 
While you do that, me put cold water on head. Then we ready to go. In a few minutes, the Lone Ranger, once more wearing his own clothes and mask, stood beside the paint horse scout. Tonto dried his face and said, Come me ride behind saddle. All right, easy, scout, easy. Come on. Uh-huh. Me ready. Come on, scout. Following the clearly defined trail of the fighting horse, the Lone Ranger and Tonto made good time. The sun was still above the buttes on the western horizon when the hoof marks led them into a maze of canyons and arroyos. All around were possible hiding places for enemies. But the masked man and Indian threw caution to the wind, hoping to find silver before darkness obscured the trail. Their course took them around a bend, and then they sighted the fenced-in mouth of the open canyon several hundred yards ahead. Look, Kimakabe, wild horse pen. Silver's inside the fence. We'll dismount here, horse scout. Boom. No, but I think... Preacher, Jim! Preacher will fill you with lead. You're covered from both sides. A quick glance told the Lone Ranger and Tonto that four Winchester rifles were aimed at them from hiding places behind rocks. They lifted their hands. They're close. We'll get their shoot back. Right. At that moment, Silver nuzzled a rope that held one end of the fence's top rail to a supporting post. It was tied with the same kind of knot the Lone Ranger used in training the big stallion. A gleam of awakened memory showed in Silver's eyes. He gripped one loop of the knot in his strong teeth and started tugging. Unaware of what Silver was doing, the Lone Ranger and Tonto held their hands at shoulder level as they walked ahead of the four men who had disarmed them. Pope led Scout. Presently, the group reached camp, only a short distance from the opening of the Box Canyon. Stop here. This is as far as you go. We're going to hang both of you, just the way Clem Ashley was hanged. Unnoticed in the pen, Silver knew that his master was nearby and redoubled his efforts to untie the rope. He tugged one bend out of the knot and started on another. Poke Yarrow said, How about unmasking this hombre? Plenty of time, Poke, plenty of time. I don't want to rush things. <laughs> I've waited too long for this day. Maybe we'd better tie his hands, boys. Then we'll unmask him. Huh? Better tie the engine's hands, too. It's a good idea. Get some rope. At that instant, the last bend in the knots at which Silver had been working came out, leaving the ends of the rope loose. The top bar dropped to the ground. Silver's wild trumpeting startled the high hunters. Folk who had picked up a rope to tie the Lone Ranger's hands looked toward the pen as Hack shouted. Hey, look! The top bar's down! How did that happen? I right? don't know, but go and put it up, Prado. Look! The stallion's jumping over the fence! Come on, Silver! Let him scout! A split second when all four killers were looking toward the pen, the Lone Ranger charged at Poe. Come on, Toto! Uh-huh. Poe staggered back from a blow to the stomach while Toto leaped at Nick. He take on! Scout reared high and flailed with his front hooves at Hack and Rube. Look out, Rube! Yeah. Scout's hoof struck Rube, knocking him unconscious. Poe had dropped his rifle, but now he drew his pistol. I'll kill you! An instant before he fired, he was struck by the charging silver. The Lone Ranger leaped toward Nick, who struggled with Tonto. I'll take care of this one. As Nick went down from the masked man's sledgehammer blow to the chin, the masked man picked up a gun and turned toward Hack, who was aiming at Tonto. The bullet smashed the killer's arm, and Hack's shot went wild. I'm ready for anyone else who wants gunplay. No, no, don't shoot. I'm hurt from that horse hit me. Don't shoot. Get his gun. Uh, Hold your fire. I'm helpless. My arm's busted. Then stand back and keep your good arm high. Cover them, Toto, while I disarm the two who's knocked out. All right, Silver, old fellow. We're in charge from now on. All other horses jump gate. Good. Hey, listen, mister. I admit you got the win in hand, but but you can't kill us in cold blood. The law will deal with you. I admit we stole your horse. That's not why the law wants you. We're turning you over to the army. Uh, The army? For the invasion of the Comanche Reservation and the shooting of an Indian boy. They'll tie them to their own horses, Toto. Uh Several hours later, in Rushville, all efforts of the captain to prolong the talks with the Indians had broken down. Chief Quanna, standing beside his Mustang on the courthouse lawn, took the braids out of his hair, then tied a knot in his pony's tail. 
The meaning of these gestures was not lost on Captain Bates. He said, Those signs, they mean war. It is war, Captain. I know, white men, you make many promises. You keep none. I ask you to catch men who kill wild horses in our lands and shoot young Comanche. You answered with many words. You did nothing. Chief, you haven't given me a chance. The only justice Indians ever get is what they make for themselves. So it is war. <laughs> wait, Chief, wait. Captain, mass man and engine are bringing in four prisoners. It must be. It is. Easy scout. Captain Bates, we captured your horse killers. Oh, you got the scoundrels just in time, mister. Chief Quana. Are those prisoners the man who shot the Indian boy? My people say they are the men. I told you they'd be captured. And now I promise you they'll be punished. Do you believe me? Oh, I believe you. You keep your word once, you will keep it again. Turning to his pony, Chief Quana took the knot out of its tail. Uh, there will be peace between us. I have spoken. Good. Now, tell us how you got the gang, mister. The Lone Ranger quickly told about the capture of the horse killers. Then Captain Bates said, We're indebted to you. You did a lot for the West. Captain Bates, the credit should go to Silver. Now, let's ride on, Tonto. Adios, friend. Goodbye, sir. Captain, who is the man who wears the mask? Chief Quana, he is the friend and protector of good people and animals. And he's the enemy of all that is bad in the West. He's the Lone Ranger. Copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Boy. Listen to The Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.